Hey, this is Greg, and I'm going to show you a trick I use to clean up a noisy guitar track. I posted about this on my Instagram, and people expressed that they wanted to see more in detail how it's done, and I couldn't really do that in the format. So I'm going to go now into super detail and explain everything that I did. Essentially, the issue was we found a guitar tone that we really liked. It was using a Strat on the single coil pickup and with pretty high gain lead guitar tone. That, of course, leads to a lot of noise because single coils have hum, and then we're putting it through a bunch of high gain. This is particularly a vintage style single coil. It was really noisy and a little microphonic. So noise was a big problem, but we loved the sound. And with the setup that I used to record this guitar, we were able to get the sound we want with the tone we want and really decrease the issue of the noise. This is the guitar part in question. <laughs> So this kind of melodic lead thing, it's got this really kind of funky resonant tone that we were getting from that particular pickup. And we want to keep that, but it was really noisy. If you listen before the part comes in. Just so much noise that it's practically unusable, but it was not unusable. So when I recorded this, I recorded a DI track along with it. That DI track sounds like this. Pretty unremarkable, but without any of that distortion, and if I zoom in here, you get a real clear image of just what he was playing and the noise, because it's not amplified and distorted, is so much lower compared to the signal that we actually want. And the way I had this set up, I had my DI going into my Apollo, and then my Apollo putting that out to a reamp box to the amp while we tracked live. And because of this, I was able to reamp that tone on the spot with the exact same sound, including the reamp box that we dialed in to get the actual tone itself. So there's no change in tone whatsoever because it's the exact same signal chain for the reamp. But before I did that, I did some processing to this DI. So the first thing that I did, RX hum, and took out some 60 cycle hum because that's very common 60 cycle hum in single coil pickups. This pretty much just nukes all that down. Then I took an equalizer and I did some more low end roll off just to get any rumble that was still down there that didn't get taken out by that 60 cycle hum thing. And then I've got this voice denoise, which I actually like a lot for applications besides voice, and I'm kind of using it as a noise gate. But what this does, it can decrease the volume different amounts with different thresholds at different frequencies. So you'll see when he's playing, the audible information is way above the threshold but at this noise at the beginning, it's below it and it's getting attenuated. I could have taken this a little further, but once I pushed it a little bit further, I started hearing some tone loss in the reamp because it was over-processing to get the noise reduction. So I tried to find the most noise that I could get rid of without losing any of the tone. Then all I did was run that DI with now the noise reduction processing back out through the exact same rig I used and recorded the reamp of that. And that sounded like this. So you'll hear there's still a little bit of noise. I could get rid of a lot of it, but if I started going further than that, I started to feel like I lost some of the tone that I actually wanted. But now that's an amount that we can handle, that we can live with. Just to hear this noise comparison, Here's before the reamp and after. Huge difference. I'll just toggle between them while it plays. Now I'll play the actual part and you'll see that although the noise is so much quieter, the stuff that we want is pretty much untouched.
So you'll see that although the noise is much, much lower, the core of the sound remains the same. It sounds a little bit thinner to me, probably because of that low cut we did to get rid of the rumble, but still sounds really good. And in the mix, that little bit of missing low end doesn't bother me at all. In the mix, I did a little bit of post-processing, a little bit of EQ, a touch of compression with this DBX compressor, and some delay and reverb with a CLA Echo Sphere. And when it came time to actually put this in the song, just cut off that noise a bit at the beginning, and it's no problem at all. This is a good example of how recording a DI track gave me the flexibility to problem solve and deal with this issue in the moment to get the sound that we wanted for the record. And this is the kind of reason I always recommend recording a DI track if you have the ability. You never know when it might come in handy.